Hello, hello dear viewers, a very warm welcome to our channel. In today's video, we are going to have a look at the principle of operation of a 5-speed manual transmission. This is a 5-speed manual transmission taken out of a Toyota pickup truck. Let's have a look at the principle of operation. In this manual transmission, there are three shafts. Right here, we have the input shaft. This is a spline where the friction disc or the clutch disc is attached, so this will be the input shaft. This input shaft is in constant mesh with the counter shaft input gear right here. So this is the input shaft gear. It is in constant mesh with the counter shaft. So right here we have a counter shaft. The counter shaft will extend until this side. So this is the counter shaft. And finally, we have the output shaft. This is the shaft that takes power from the transmission and supply to the propeller shaft and to the drive axle. Now, when you look at the number of gears, this is a five-speed manual transmission. When we count gears, we are going to start by looking at the different gear sizes on the counter shaft. For example, the smallest gear on the counter shaft belongs to gear number one. Right there, right there, there is a small gear that is meshed with the largest gear on the output shaft. These output shaft gears, they are mounted on a roller bearing so they are not directly coupled to the output shaft. So the largest gear on the output shaft belongs to gear number one, and the smallest gear on the counter shaft, which is right there, down there, belongs to gear number one. Right there, there is a gear that is in constant mesh with this larger gear. So when power is taken from that small gear and joined to this large gear, and then taken to the output shaft, that will be gear number one. For selecting gear number one, this gear selector synchronizer assembly will be shifted to this side. When it is shifted to this side and when some of the teeth will be meshed to the shift dog on the speed gear for gear number one, and some of the gear is already on the output shaft hub, and only then first gear is selected. Now, as you can see, when we are turning the output shaft, the speed gear for gear number one is not rotating. Only the output shaft and those components in constant mesh with the output shaft are rotating. As you can see, the speed gears are not rotating. Here we have a speed gear, here we have a speed gear, and here we have a speed gear. Because they are supported by a roller bearing, they are not moving when we turn the output shaft. Now let's engage first gear and see the power flow. For that, we will be shifting this selector to this side so that the synchronizer sleeve will mesh this shift dog and this shift it is, this speed gear shift it is to the gear hub. Let's do that. Now, first gear is selected. As you can see, this synchronizer sleeve has partly engaged to the speed gear shift dog tees right there and it is partly connected to the hub that is joined to the output shaft. Now, for this particular speed, power from the clutch, it will be supplied to the input gear. Then the input gear is in constant mesh to the counter shaft input gear. Then from this gear, it will go to first speed gear, the smallest gear. And then from there, it comes to the output shaft. From the output gear, from the output shaft speed gear for gear number one to this synchronizer sleeve, from the synchronizer sleeve to the hub, then from the hub to the output shaft. So this is power flow for gear number one. This is how it operates. See, when clutch is moving, when engine is starting to supply power through the clutch, as you can see, gear number one is selected, engine is running with a maximum torque. Engine is running with low, I mean, the vehicle is being driven with the smallest speed and with a larger torque. Because the smaller gear on the counter shaft is driving a larger gear on the output shaft, this will reduce the speed and it will multiply torque. So this is gear number one. When selecting gear number two, gear number two is corresponding to the second largest gear on the counter shaft. Now, this one is for reverse, this one is for second gear. This second gear on the counter shaft is in constant mesh with the speed gear for second gear on the output shaft. 
So by shifting this assembly to this side, we will now engage this gear, which is second speed gear, into the hub by the synchronizer sleeve. By doing so, second gear is selected. Now let's go ahead and select second gear. For selecting second gear, first you shift to neutral. Then you, when you further pull it to this side, it will engage second gear. Now second gear is selected. So for this particular speed, from the input shaft, power will be received to the counter shaft. Then from the counter shaft, input gear, it will go to the second speed gear on the counter shaft. From that gear, it comes to the output, to the main speed gear on the output shaft belonging to gear number two. And then through this synchronizer sleeve assembly, it will join to the synchronizer hub. And finally, it will go to the output shaft. So when spinning this, when turning this, when turning this, as you can see, second gear is engaged. So output shaft is rotating with second gear speed. Then when selecting, when, when selecting, let's shift it out. Then when selecting third gear, third speed gear belongs to these two gears. As you can see on the output shaft, the speed gears are reducing. That will increase the speed and reduce torque. On the counter shaft, gear size is increasing, and on the output shaft, gear size is reducing. So this gear belongs to third gear. When third gear is selected, this synchronizer sleeve will be shifted to this side, engaging this shift dock to the input to the output shaft. So by shifting this to the right, this is how it is selected. Now, from the input shaft, power will be transferred to the input counter. From here, it will be taken to this speed gear. And from the speed gear, through the synchronizer sleeve assembly and to the synchronizer hub, it will go to the output shaft. This is third gear. So vehicle is now increasing speed, reducing torque. Fourth gear is a direct drive. This is a five-speed manual transmission. Fourth gear is a direct drive. So by shifting this to this side, we can engage the input directly to the output shaft. So when the synchronizer sleeve meshes to this shift dock and joins this input gear, input shaft, to the output shaft directly, that is direct drive, and we call it force gear. Let's go ahead and put it on. Now this is direct drive. By the direct drive, we mean there is no speed reduction, there is no torque multiplication. Engine output will be directly coupled to the output shaft. This is done by power coming from the engine will be directly joined to the sleeve and from the sleeve it will go to the hub. From the hub it will go to the output shaft. So this is the direct drive. Now engine speed and output shaft speed is similar because we are on direct drive. And finally, on this particular gear, for forward travel, we have an overdrive, fifth gear. On fifth gear, right here on the counter shaft, we have a larger gear on the counter shaft that is joined to a smaller gear on the output shaft, which means the output shaft, when this gear is selected, is being driven at higher speed than the input. So by joining this gear to this gear, and constantly meshing it to the output shaft, that will select fifth gear, overdrive. We call it overdrive. Now, in order to select overdrive, this output gear, speed gear for fifth gear, is in constant mesh on the output shaft. And this counter gear, however, is not in constant mesh. So by selecting this assembly and meshing it to the counter shaft, the counter shaft will be coupled to this speed gear only when this selector is pulled to this side, that will engage overdrive. This is overdrive. This is the fifth gear that is selected. So by doing so, 
when the vehicle is driven at some speed, the output shaft will be driven at higher speed than the engine speed. This is called an overdrive. So when fifth gear is selected, output shaft speed is larger than the counter speed, which is larger than the direct drive speed. So this is the fifth gear. Now, when going for reverse gear, reverse gear is done by simply introducing an idler gear, which is right here, by introducing an idler gear between the counter shaft and the output shaft. By engaging this idler gear onto this gear, and then partly by engaging it to the spur gear on the idler. Right there, there is a spur gear on the idler that can be engaged to this idler gear. So by adjusting and aligning this idler gear, now look, the idler gear is engaging to this gear and this gear at the same time. Look. Like so. When it is selected like so, power from the input will be taken to the counter shaft from the counter shaft, it will be taken to that spur gear. From the spur gear, it will be going to the idler. And from the idler, it will be going to the speed gear synchronizer assembly. And that will shift the direction of rotation. And this is the reverse gear. So by introducing an idler gear in between, we can change direction of travel. And that is how idler gear is used in order to generate reverse direction. As you can see, it is moving in opposite direction. For example, when I'm moving it in counterclockwise direction, when the input shaft is being rotated in counterclockwise direction, as you can see, the output shaft is moving in a clockwise direction. So by introducing an idler gear in between, we can change the direction of rotation, and this is how the reverse gear operates. So dear viewers, this is simply a simple explanation showing how manual transmission of a five-speed manual gearbox operates. As we have seen, there are, in summary, there are three shafts. There is an input shaft, there is a counter shaft, and there is an output shaft. And there are different speed gears that will allow the vehicle to be driven at different speed and different torque. Well, that is all we have for you in this presentation regarding the principle of operation and construction of a five-speed manual transmission. If you like this video, please smash the like button. If you are new here, do consider subscribing and turn on notifications so that you will be notified whenever we come up with another video. Until then, stay safe.